Hi and welcome to Biostat Squid. I'm really happy to bring you this tutorial series where we will go over the basic steps of pre-processing and quality checks of high throughput sequencing reads in R. Before we dive in, let us just go over the basics. So as you know, in recent years, sequencing technology is really taking off. And these sequencing experiments typically give millions of reads. These reads are then mapped onto a reference genome and, for example, allow us to count how many reads overlap with your promoter's set of interest, for example, or you might want to quantify RNA-seq reads that overlap with exons. But of course, before we can use the data, we need to pre-process the reads, run a few quality control checks, and then align them or map them onto the genome. For this tutorial, you will need R or R Studio, and you will need to install the following packages. So let's dive in. So for those of you who have already watched my other tutorials, you know I like to uh, clean up uh, our environment in case we have hidden objects in the background, free up memory and set our working directory. We also need to load the necessary libraries. Um, for part one of this series, you will not need all of these libraries, but you can just load them all. So this is the folder I'll be working in and I set my working directory to this path. And I can list the files in this path. And as you can see right now, there are no files. Okay, so I will be using uh, sample data from the package quas or um, this is it. And it's actually found in a subfolder called ext data. So I will just set the folder, so the location, we can print it here. So this is where my data is located in this quas or x data folder. And with this function directory, we can print out all the contents of the folder. And in particular, I will be using chip sequencing data. So from chromatin immunoprecipitation experiments, which basically target regions of interaction between proteins and DNA. Now, obviously, each type of high throughput sequencing data has its own peculiarities and things you have to watch out for when you preprocess it. I will mention a few alternatives and additional steps you might need depending on your data set and type of data, but you should definitely check out if your data needs extra steps. We start the example workflow by copying the files we need from the sample data folder, so from this folder, um, to our current working directory, to the folder we'll be working in. Of course, you can just copy the files manually, but we will just do it with a bit of code here. So as you know, these are all the files here and we will only subset or select a few of them. So we will need the chip files and we will also need this file for the alignment. So these are the three files you need. You can go ahead and just copy them manually if you want. Otherwise we will assign them to this object called file names. Now we will copy the files listed in file names to our folder. And we will also create another object called chip file names, which will only contain the two files with the chip data, the two fast Q files with the chip data. Uh, where is this here? Starting with chip and ending with BZ2. So now my <clears throat> chip file names, oh yeah, of course. There you go, these are our two chip file names. And now we release the files in our path in our folder, 
we see we have the two chip files and it didn't find oh i missed a g let's just run it again and now we also find our genome reference file so let's begin with quality control. When sequencing, the machine might produce base calls. So basically deciding if the base, uh, if the base reads A, C, G, or T with different quality. Also, there might be adapter contamination and other issues which we need to check. And we will use the RQC function from the RQC package, which takes the fastq files and returns an object with sequence quality related results. So we will just assign it to this object, QC results, and we need to give it our path, our folder, um, a pattern which tells it which files to select. In this case, files that start with chip and end with BZ2. We don't want to open the results on the browser, but we want them saved in our path. And as we see, the report has been created. Okay, so this all created quality control metrics and assigned them to this object. And obviously now we want to visualize this quality control metrics. We will first plot the sequence quality per base or cycle. This plot shows the quality scores across all bases at each position in the reads. The x-axis shows the position of the reads. You will see that the x-axis is labeled as cycle, and this is because in each sequencing cycle, a fluorescently labeled nucleotide is added to complement the template sequence, and the sequencing machine identifies which nucleotide is added. So in cycle one, we determine what the first base in all fragments is. In the next cycle, the machine determines what the second base is. Therefore, cycles correspond to bases or nucleotides along the read, and the number of cycles is equivalent to the read length. So we have position 1, 2, 3, and so on, and in this case up to 36. In the y-axis, we have the quality score, which is an estimate of the probability of that base being called wrongly. So obviously we want this quality score or Q score to be as high as possible. You will often see that towards the end of the reads, the quality usually goes down. Um, it helps us decide in case we need to trim the end of the reads later on, because we cannot really trust the sequenced bases towards the start or the end of the reads. In general, a good example will have median quality scores per base above 28. If scores are below 20 towards the end, then you can think about trimming the reads. Per base sequence content shows the nucleotide proportions for each position or cycle. In a random sequencing library, there should be no nucleotide bias and the lines should be almost parallel with each other. So something like this. However, some types of sequencing libraries can produce a biased sequence composition. I give some more examples of this in my post. The link is in the description down below. The read frequency plot shows the degree of duplication for every read in the library. So a high level of duplication or non-unique reads is likely to indicate an enrichment bias. Basically that we have a high proportion of the same sequence. This could be due to PCR artifacts that can cause technical duplicates. What do we mean by this? As you know, PCR amplifies or creates many copies of a sequence fragment. In RNA-seq experiments, the non-unique read proportion can be more than 20%, but these duplications can also be from genes simply being expressed at high levels. This means that there will be many copies of transcripts and many copies of the same fragment. Since we cannot be sure if these duplicated reads are due to PCR bias or an effect of high transcription, we should not remove duplicate reads in RNA-seq analysis. However, in chromatin immunoprecipitation sec experiments, duplicated reads are more likely due to PCR bias. 
Of course, there are other quality metrics and quality control tools. And again, this is only a guide for standard whole genome sequencing examples. And there will be different steps if you're analyzing RNA-seq, bisulfite, amplicon, transposase, attack-seq, or many other data. I would also like to mention FastQC, which is the most popular tool for sequencing quality control, but that is a story for another video. OrQC package also offers the option of creating a quality control report with more quality control checks. So let's just run this and assign it to the OrQC report object. And of course, you can just go um, to the folder and click to open it. But I will open it using this open file in operating system or QC report, which opens our report. And here you will see more quality control plots that might help you detect issues in your reads. Squid-tastic. In my next video, we will see how to filter out bad reads or trim the ends of the reads with worse quality. Thank you very much for watching. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Let me know what you thought of this tutorial. I really hope it was helpful and I really appreciate all your comments and support. Have a squid-tastic day and see you in the next one.